My intention for today's conversation, I intend to unlock a key today that leads you into a space of greater wisdom about the true nature of who you really are. My intention is that you come to know yourself even more, even more. So today I am taking you on a fantastic voyage. Now that takes me way back to 1980. Some of you probably weren't even born in 1980. And to the band, I know Dwayne is raising his hand. I wasn't. (laughs) To the band Lakeside. That song is called Fantastic Voyage from their album of the same name. I am taking you on a fantastic voyage this morning. And this journey, this story that I'm about to tell you is all about you. So please keep in mind everything I'm talking about is about you. So let's start here. Let me ask you a question. Where were you before your father's sperm fertilized your mother's egg? Where were you? Where were you? I'm going to tell you about a man who is said to have lived a very long time ago. Let's go back to about 626 B.C. B.C. as in before Christ. This young man heard messages from God. And he gave those messages to the people around him. And through numerous writings, he pretty much reprimanded his people as living in opposition to the ways of God as they understood them at that time. And his tribe revolted against him. And after about 20 years of hearing these messages from God and passing them along to the people, this man often found himself in great danger from the political and religious leaders of his day who were frankly angry at the oracles coming through this man. And he was eventually cast or thrown into a cistern, C-I-S-T-E-R-N, a cistern. And he was left for dead. But he was rescued from that pit by a Kushite slave servant of the king. Some of you may know that religious mythology calls this man Jeremiah. Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was a prophet for about 40 years of his life. And one day, way back in the beginning, when he was a very young man, the Bible tells us that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Many of us have heard that scripture many, many times, and we have probably quoted it often ourselves. So now, Back to my original question. Where were you? And in this case, where was Jeremiah 
before his father's sperm fertilized his mother's egg? Where was he? And where were you before your father's sperm fertilized your mother's egg? Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. That's how the Bible unfolds the beginning of Jeremiah's 40-year journey as a prophet. Now, in modern mainstream science, which is the science of the visible, we are still debating at what point life actually begins at the very moment of conception or when the fetus has reached a certain number of weeks of growth and on and on and on and on. Now, in sacred spiritual science, which is the science of the invisible, that is not a mystery to be solved, brothers and sisters. Sacred science teaches us that though mankind comes from the earth, Man is actually a light-born spirit. A light-born spirit. And that spirit is placed in the body at or around the time your father's sperm fertilizes your mother's egg. So in the body, mankind is birthed into the earth. And for the duration of his natural life, mankind is bound to the earth. And yet man is not born of the earth. Man is a light born spirit. Now, quick word about the earth. This planet that we call Earth, this beloved planet that we call Earth, is alive. Earth is a living, conscious, organic, sentient being. The Earth, I don't know if this is news to some people, but the Earth is alive. Remember Julie Andrews used to sing, the hills are alive with the sound of music? Well, the Earth is alive. It's like putting a baby in an incubator it is a temporary home for the newborn until it grows up enough that it no longer needs the incubator like that incubator the earth is a temporary home for the light born spirit that is humankind or mankind now this begins to make more sense when you Consider those scriptures in John 17 where Jesus, and we've all heard this, makes a distinction between being in the world, but not of the world. Being in the world, but not of the world. And what the Christ consciousness was teaching in that moment and in that text is that we are starborn. That we are children of the infinite cosmic light. Now... This is easier for some Christian traditionalists to digest if you consider the idea of heaven. Most people accept without question that when we leave our bodies, when we quote unquote die, we will forever reside up there in heaven. Well, where is heaven? Heaven is in the sky. Among the stars, we return to that from whence we came. We've all heard that saying, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Now that is for the earthly physical body. We are, as I said, first a spirit and we live in a body. While the body goes from ashes to ashes and from dust to dust, the spirit of man goes from glory to glory. From light to light. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. 
That's what the Bible teaches in Jeremiah 1.5. Man is a light born spirit. We existed in spirit as light before we were joined to our earthly body. Man is a star. Just like you look up in the sky and you see the stars. Man is a star bound to a physical body here on earth. Well, how do we go from spirit to matter? Now, we briefly touched on this very topic last week when we were talking with author, poet, and healing arts practitioner, Paula Potts. Take a listen. I've been waking up with these sort of portals from heaven talking to me, and it's like vapor or ethers first, then liquid, then solid. Solid being our bodies. But there are some subtle bodies outside of this physical body, and people come to healing for the solids. But you got to deal with the liquid and the vapors, because that's where it starts. It starts in the ethers. Amen. You hear me? And we got to deal with that. And that goes well, back to the trauma and the, and, the, and the things that you talked about. That's where it is. Amen. You can stop some Amen. symptoms in your Amen. knee, but it will shift like you said. Yes, you can. That's right. Until you solve the whole problem. Mm-hmm. And you are speaking energy medicine language. So you get an A today, too. Because what you just said <laughs> about how it steps down from the vapors and the ethers and the spirit and the soul down yes. to the physical emotion, that's exactly the paradigm that we use. Okay, right on. And so it is a holistic paradigm because that's what we know to be true. That process we were talking about right there, from vapors and ether to liquid to solid, that process is called in. Evolution, I N V O L U T I O N. Involution. I've talked about this before. The biggest book in my house is Webster's Third International Dictionary. It is a huge blue leather bound book. And Webster's Third International Dictionary defines involution as a relation of a higher type of reality. To a lower type as mind to matter upon which it depends. A relation of a higher type of reality to a lower type of reality upon which it depends as mind to matter. So in sacred spiritual science, which again is the science of the invisible, we exist as light, as vapor, as ether. Some may better visualize this state as angelic or as you would imagine the clouds moving above us here on earth. We exist as vapor in a higher type of reality. We existed as light in this etheric state, formless and shapeless before we were joined with a physical body here on earth. In a lower type of reality. Sacred science teaches this seven step process of involution. Seven step process. And here's the process. First, there were gases. Vapor. Ether. Second, the gases solidified. Forming the earth. Third. The gases separated, dividing water from the atmosphere. Fourth, there was fire, which raised the land above the water. Fifth, life came forth, forming the cosmic egg. Another way to fashion the cosmic egg in your mind is to think of it as the universal nursery. Sixth, life came forth, forming the land. And seventh, the final step, the Elohim, E-L-O-H-I-M. That's a Hebrew word, meaning the male, female spirits of God. The Elohim, Spoke, let us make man after our, that's a key word, our, 
let us make man after our own fashion or in our own image. Now, the shortcut version of this process is vapors, liquids, solids. Now, if you track the seven day creation story of man as laid out in the Bible in Genesis chapter one, verses one through 27, if you track that with the seven step process I just laid down here, they are in alignment. They are in alignment. Life first appeared in the waters. That's your liquid. Then we became solid. So ask yourself this. Just go with me here. Why do we need water to survive? Why is our solid body mostly made up of water? Because water is the evolutionary precursor to our solid state. And why do we need air to breathe? Because air, vapor, gases, that's the evolutionary precursor to both solid and liquid. First came the vapors, then came the liquids, then came the solids. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 5, the Bible reads, But they deliberately forget... That long ago, by God's word, the heavens existed and the earth was formed out of water and by water. Second Peter chapter three, verse five. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens existed and the earth was formed out of water and by water. Vapor gives you water. Now, there are some schools of thought in sacred science that place. All right, I'm jumping in a little bit deeper here. So just go with me. Suspend disbelief and go with me here. Okay, let your minds be free. Some schools of thought place human beings in earlier civilizations here on Earth in a non corporeal state, meaning those humans were not fully solid. Rather, they were in a state of evolving from fully vapor to fully solid. They were a hybrid of the two. Some sacred scientists placed the Atlanteans from Atlantis and the Lemurians from Lemuria in this category. I'm not going too much deeper into that because I'm still studying this out for myself, but I do want to make that point. My big picture point here is that Earth is not our origin. Mankind is a light born spirit that descends to earth and into the concept of quote unquote time, T I M E, for a finite period. And when that quote unquote time is complete, the process reverses itself. We then go from solid to liquid to vapor and ether again. And we call this process ascension. Ascension. We return as spirit to the light from whence we came. And as spirit, formless and shapeless, we continue to exist in the light. So, at some point, somebody goes, why are you telling me all this? Well, when we look at this expanded life cycle in this way, from involution to Earth and ascension from Earth, we are then able to, I think, more clearly see our earthly lives from a higher spiritual life purpose. In other words, this big picture view of life begins to beg some questions. Why am I here? And what did I come here for? Now, the great spirit we call God, the most high God, the universe, divine mind, whatever name you choose to use, that great spirit, as the Bible points out in Jeremiah, has a specific micro assignment for your particular life. As well as a macro assignment for your unique life within 
the family of mankind. Let's say a word about macrocosm and microcosm. Macrocosm. Macrocosmos. This is the big universe, also known as the big picture. Microcosm. Microcosmos. This is the little universe. The small picture. This is man as a reflection of the universe. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. That, brothers and sisters, was Jeremiah's micro assignment. His unique prescription for living out the number of years he would inhabit the planet. As a humankind, we all share the same macro, big picture assignment. Well, what exactly is our collective assignment as human beings? Our divine assignment, and this applies to each and every one of us, our divine assignment to be carried out in however many years we inhabit this planet, our divine assignment is to evolve the species. To evolve the species. I am here on Earth to evolve the human species. You are here on earth to evolve the human species. We are here, my beloved brothers and sisters, together to expand human consciousness, to raise the human vibration, to increase the human frequency, to bridge the gap between our humanity and our divinity. We are here together on earth To meet and to know and to merge into that great spirit some of us call God. To become one again with that from which we came. And that, my beloved brothers and sisters, that is the soul work of our lifetime. That is the soul work of our lifetime to evolve the human species and evolution is our key word in today's conversation. Evolution. Self to love.